Coming up on Mountain News at 6 with the weather making it harder on folks getting to and leaving work. First responders are helping them get to where they need to be. And we'll hear about one Pike County organization's efforts to keep blessing boxes full during the cold and snowy weather. Plus, we are tracking some more snow and frigid temperatures. Your first alert forecast on the way as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Our stretch of first alert weather days continues. Today it was for dangerously cold temperatures. Now we are looking ahead to more snow. First alert meteorologist Cameron Aaron gave us his first call for snowfall at 4 and has more on what's heading our way. Cameron. Yes, yeah, Steve, let's enjoy this awesome sunset right now across the mountains. Here's a live look from Buffalo Mountain. You can see we are dry under that clear sky at this hour. But like you mentioned, more snow is on the way as we go into tomorrow. Right now, though, on first alert pinpoint Doppler, we are dry as high pressure is in control. So because of the snow on the ground, also the clear sky, some more very cold weather is on the way tonight. Temperatures at this hour still well below freezing down to 23 in Pikeville, 17 for Grundy, 22 in Jackson and 25 over in Somerset at this hour, but temperatures tonight back in the lower teens to upper single digits as you wake up on Thursday. We do have a winter weather advisory in place for all the areas in purple that will last from Thursday evening through Saturday for most of us for Campbell and Claiborne County that will expire at 7 p.m. on Friday. So we are tracking some more rain and snow chances, possibly a little bit of wintry mix close to the Kentucky and Tennessee border. More details on that Thursday system, plus some more brutally cold weather by the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. The London Laurel Rescue Squad is making sure work continues at a nearby hospital. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox has more on their mission through this week's winter storm and the impact first responders have made. The rescue squad vehicles are not just being used to carry their equipment. The London Laurel Rescue Squad does transportation for hospital employees at St. Joe London. If they are going in on a night shift or morning shift. That doesn't matter. A lot of those employees live way out into the country where they haven't gotten to their roads yet. Transportation includes patients needing dialysis treatment as well. Those people have to have sometimes every other day, sometimes once a week, and it's something that's treatment that they have to have. Transportation is a part of the mission for first responders beyond the rescue squad too. I would have been out there too much longer. There's no doubt that I would not be here. Smith says he was walking to a friend's house when he became weak, then called 911. And those guys came rushing in and got me in and brought me here and fed me and they're just wonderful people. Smith has been staying at the London Community Center, a warming center for the public during the winter storm. He says he is thankful for the life-saving work of first responders. These guys are number one in my book. Smith says he hopes to get back to work soon. In London, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. First responders say they are keeping the London Community Center open as a warming center on a day-by-day -day basis as they monitor the weather conditions. In Rockcastle County, crews braved the frigid temperatures to tend to some crashes early this morning. The Broadhead Fire Department responded to multiple crashes on Interstate 75 overnight. One near mile marker 58 and the other about 10 miles north involving multiple semis. Officials say at least one person was injured. No deaths reported. The incidents caused a lot of headaches for drivers, which had at one point reduced the interstate to just one lane. In Lawrence County, several roads were shut down after the winter storm earlier this week, but they have now reopened. Today started with temperatures in the single digits with wind chills in the negatives. In fact, temps have been so cold, a wet shirt could have been frozen solid within minutes. Lawrence County Deputy Judge Executive Vince Doty says crews have worked nonstop and are on alert with the possibility of more snow coming in. They're, they're still at it. They're working hard. You know, you, you got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, it's not an easy job, but they're out there doing it. Many roads that were treated after the first round of snow froze over again last night. And when that happens, it's important to not let your guard down and use extra caution. Well, between snow and icy roads, many local businesses were forced to close down as a way to make sure people stay safe. 
One business owner in Harlan kept both of his stores closed Monday and Tuesday. WYMT's Jack Demler spoke with Jeff Marietta about the impact this weather can have on local businesses. As people were advised to stay home and off the roads while Arctic temperatures covered the Commonwealth, Harlan business owner Jeff Marietta made the decision to keep his businesses closed. Obviously being closed is tough, um, but there's more important things than life. With having to keep the doors closed, Marietta says the focus was on cutting fixed cost. Turning down the thermostat um, immediately and just making sure that you're trying to conserve as much electricity during cold days because the utility company, that's the thing where you really get hurt because a month from now we're going to get hit with a huge bill just like everyone else in eastern Kentucky will because of their heating costs. With businesses opening back up, Marietta says it's all about capitalizing on people getting back out on the roads. You know, number two is just try to open up uh, and, and, and capture some of that pent up demand when people are ready and getting some cabin fever and want to get out. Marietta says it's all about preparing for events that keep them closed, such as dangerous weather conditions. Winters are tough for small businesses, you know. January is really, really hard, for, especially for restaurants. It's tough. I mean, you're operating on very, very, very thin margins, and you also have employees who are relying on you, you know, to work to cover their rent and their utilities, and so you get it from all sides. And while it was a tough decision to make, Marietta says the safety of the employees and the customers takes precedent. In Harlan County, Jack Demler, WMT Mountain News. Marietta says when deciding whether or not to leave his businesses open, the first question they asked was, is it safe? As snow continues to try and melt, temperatures remain below freezing, which means there are plenty of icy sidewalks and driveways. Visits to the ER due to slips and falls are not uncommon after winter storms. In order to try and prevent slips and falls, there are a few things you can do. But if you're uh, out there, we always say um, uh, walk like a penguin, uh, which is kind of a waddle side to side. It kind of uh, uh, steadies your uh, your center of gravity and it makes you a little more prepared uh, to if, if you were to slip to kind of catch yourself. And when you are outside, frostbite and hypothermia are possible, so you need to protect yourself. Here are some cold weather tips if you have to be out in the elements. Wear layers of loose-fitting, lightweight, warm clothing. Wear a hat to keep your head dry and out of the wind. Cover your mouth to protect your lungs from extreme cold. Mittens snug at the wrist are better than gloves. Blessing boxes are often used by those in need to grab a quick meal or a needed coat. And as the snow and cold takes over the region, mission organizers say the needs are more evident than ever. WYMT's Buddy Forbes spoke to organizations in Pike County that hope to keep Blessing with a little help from you. Rachel Dotson's team is restocking the East Kentucky Dream Center's Blessing Box several times a day. You constantly replenish and you have that one that comes and tries to take everything. But what about those that still need it coming in behind them that truly have nothing? A pursuit to provide, which Grace Fellowship Pastor Debbie Bailey knows all about. You know, it's such a, such a blessing. I'm seeing way more need in our community than we can possibly meet. The organizations are only separated by half a mile, approximately a 10 minute walk in downtown Pikeville. But the overwhelming obstacle of winter weather is keeping both of their boxes bare. Can you imagine being outside with wet socks and wet shoes in this weather? I couldn't, you know, it's, it's hypothermia, it's, you can end up in the hospital. And since the number of blessing box locations has dwindled compared to last winter. You know, you've heard the old saying that one person can ruin a good thing. Um, and I feel like that's kind of, that's happened here. The supply is not faring well against the snow as the organizations ask those who can to donate some cans. I know just the other day I was looking at our blessing box and I saw a can of pinto beans half eaten. So that says a lot if someone is sitting there on a bench eating a cold can of pinto beans. But I was thankful that there was a can of pinto beans in the blessing box for them to eat. Asking for winter accessories to keep neighbors in need warm and more non-perishable, easy to prep food to keep them well. 
people are hungry around the clock. <laughs> people are in need of staying warm around the clock. Not just when a, a facility is open, someone can come in for a free meal. So the blessing boxes provide that opportunity. Saying sometimes you don't have to think outside of the box to find ways to bless those in need. In ways that you just don't even anticipate. You just have to fill it. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The organizations also provide free hot meals throughout the week. Grace Community Kitchen opens on Mondays and Thursdays. The Dream Center operates on Wednesdays and Fridays. And Faith Life Market provides free meals every Tuesday to fill the gap and keep meals available all week. Well, staying weather aware is always important, especially with more snow coming late tomorrow, which is why we want to remind you again to get the WIMT First Alert weather app. You can follow the radar and keep track with the latest weather alerts even when you do not have electricity. Scan this QR code or search for it in your app store to download. Well, we are tracking some dry weather as we go into tonight, but notice as we zoom out that next system is knocking on the door. Those details coming up after this break. Plus, we break down what's in a new state budget plan proposed by Republicans.